Right at the red dot for record is off. Okay, so let's regroup for a moment. Somehow for a minute.
Thank you for your patience while we were sorting out our technical difficulties. This is my personal laptop, which has um, an amazing Japanese button on it. So if I if I hit that by accident, bear with me while I fix it. Um, hopefully, we've got the screen up and everything should be all right. The sound is working good. Yes, everyone can hear. Lovely. Um, so. Welcome to this session. Um, I'm Sinead. I'm going to be your session host in here for most of today. And for the first uh, session today from 10 to 11, we've got two talks in here. Um, I'll be trying to, to keep time. Um, so we also have uh, a hashtag for today, which is Wikimedia 2014. Uh, sorry, Wikimania 2014. Um, I'll be tweeting. I encourage you all to, to tweet as well. Um, and I'd like to uh, introduce our first speaker which is um, Amir Aharoni, and he's going to be talking to us today about how I wrote an article for another encyclopedia and how it compares to Wikipedia. So please warmly welcome him already to the stage. Uh, hi, so that's my name. Uh, you don't need to know Hebrew to understand this talk. Um, there's a PDF that's kind of funny, but never mind. Um, so, that's my name. Uh, I live in Israel, I speak Hebrew, uh, and um, a few years ago I was offered to write an article for an encyclopedia. Uh, I've been writing for Wikipedia for almost 10 years now, and it was a very pleasant surprise that somebody wants me to write an article for some other encyclopedia. Uh, so that's what it is about. Uh, and um, as we know, we time to stop printing. Um, encyclopedias are going through a kind of a crisis, a kind of a market change. Uh, Brokhouse also stopped printing. Uh, encyclopedia Hebraica, the, the beautiful 30 volume encyclopedia in, in Hebrew, it stopped printing many years ago already. Um, there are some surprises, for example. The big uh, Kazakh uh, encyclopedia was a few years ago uh, uh, released as a Creative Commons uh, thanks to some efforts by 
uh, Wikimedians and uh, also with company language uh, in India, but these are usually the exceptions. Another very big exception is the great Russian encyclopedia. It's, it's, it's in print, uh, there's a whole new edition coming out, uh, but still these are the exceptions. Um, there are a lot of specialized encyclopedias. Encyclopedias that are not huge in general, but specialized on a certain topic. Um, and um, um, I'm going to speak about one that is published by this famous publishing house, Drill. It publishes lots of them. So there's, there's a partial list of the um, encyclopedias that they publish. Uh, there's some more. Uh, apparently there is a market for that. Uh, what kind of a market we'll speak in a few minutes. Uh, but it exists. It's, it's going on and uh, there is demand. The one I'm going to speak about is the Encyclopedia of Hebrew Language and Linguistics. Again, you don't need to know any Hebrew, so don't let that scare you away. Um, how it began? Uh, I did the BA in um, Hebrew Language at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Um, and one of my lecturers surprised me and asked me, can I challenge you? It was, that's that's uh, the actual wording from the email. Can I challenge you? I was asked to find uh, somebody to write an article about vocalization, um, basically the vowels of Hebrew. I was very happy. I said, of course, uh, you can challenge me. Uh, now, just a very quick explanation of what is vocalization. Uh, so this is a Hebrew word. This is how uh, Wikipedia is written on Hebrew. So these little dots and lines at the bottom, these are the vowels. So that's what the article I wrote is about. That's all the Hebrew that you need to know for this uh, talk. Um, so, and then I received this official invitation, which made me exceedingly happy. They invited me to write an article for an encyclopedia. I've been doing that for years on Wikipedia, but this is like a real one. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's in print. And they, it's printed or...? It's, 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 it's in print, and they sent, me, they sent me a description. It will be three volumes in print, and it will be in libraries, and PhDs, lots of PhDs will write for it, and uh, wow, and I'm a part of it. How great. And that was panicky. Uh, oh my god, um, I have no idea what to do. Uh, that, that was actually my, my, my first serious academic publication, would be my first serious academic publication. Uh, the topic description that they sent me was quite confusing. I won't go into details because I don't have the time, uh, but it was quite confusing. I wasn't really sure. Uh, initially, I, I thought I know what is it about. Then the topic description as they sent me in the email was quite confusing. So I started writing emails to professors. Uh, asking them for help, uh, I wrote an email to one professor, he told me, yeah, I don't, I, I, I'm on the team of that encyclopedia, but I don't actually do anything. Just email the editor-in-chief. Editor-in-chief. Do we have an editor-in-chief in Wikipedia? We don't. <laughs> but there is an editor-in-chief. Uh, I was lucky, the editor-in-chief is a very nice person. Um, but until I get, got to meet the editor-in-chief, I started reading books. Um, that I thought are relevant for the topic of the article that I, um, I'm supposed to write. I was reading, reading, reading. It was very interesting. Uh, and then I finally met the editor-in-chief. And uh, he told me, oh, just develop that article as you wish, the way you feel appropriate. And that's, that's actually a very interesting thing. The editors do not wish to be too prescriptive about its content. That's, again, the precise wording from the email. They don't want to be prescriptive. I, I mean, I say, OK, great, freedom. I can do whatever I want. Uh, but but really, can I really do whatever I want? Um, apparently, yes. Uh, the, 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 the end of the story is yes. Uh, I was pretty free. Um, the article is supposed to be on topic, and I actually own it. Uh, practically nobody gets in the way, which is, again, very different from Wikipedia. And this is, this is an example. Uh, about 100 years ago, before the October Revolution in Russia, there was a big encyclopedia published in Russia, and um, they asked uh, Lenin to write the article about Marxism. Uh, so Lenin probably a, is indeed an expert on Marxism, but he probably has a point of view on it. And, but, but they let him write it. So that's, that's the question. I mean, it's, I suppose it's very comfortable for Lenin. It's very comfortable for me uh, to own the article, but uh, that's not how Wikipedia works, and that's a pretty big difference. Um, nevertheless, I, I mentioned this not necessarily as a bad thing. Um, I, I always think that if we get more academics to write their articles and their style and publish them as free content, uh, this is actually very, very beneficial for Wikipedia. Uh, but just, just to be, just to know. Uh, also, this is this is a, a hugely important thing. Um, our vowels of Hebrew is obviously a major topic in an encyclopedia about Hebrew, so. Am I really the only one who is writing about vowels? I don't know. Maybe there are other people. 
uh, how much uh, how much am I supposed to cover? What is supposed to be my scope? I have no idea. In Wikipedia, I, I see everything already. I don't have to wait for the publishing date. I don't have to talk to the editor. I just see everything. Uh, if I see that something is missing, I just write it. That's not how, how it is. Uh, I'm in my own territory. Um, and maybe I, I'll write something that overlaps with something that somebody else wrote. Maybe, maybe not. I, I don't know. That's a challenge. And, and writing Wikipedia like this one, that's a challenge. Um, and by the way, the book I read uh, when I was preparing was completely irrelevant. Uh, but they read it. Uh, they learned something. Uh, eventually, the topic was completely different. Now, here we get to a huge topic. Um, I hope it's not too boring. Uh, we get to the topic of copyright. Now, we are free content, uh, many of us are free content geeks. Um, I had to sign a copyright contract to write in that uh, encyclopedia. It was pretty depressing. Um, uh, so I am the author. Uh, that's, that's the actual wording of the contract. I assigned the, the full copyright of my contribution, uh, which assignment the publisher accepts. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, the publisher shall have the exclusive right throughout the world to publish and sell the contribution in all languages. Uh, that encyclopedia was only in English, but they have the rights for all languages. Um, in whole, in part, and so on. Uh, I could, I, as far as I understand this, I cannot rephrase my article and publish it in Wikipedia. Um, I, I cannot publish it in any electronic. Well, that's, that's, that's a fairly standard copyright notice, but nevertheless, it's quite depressing for me for as a Wikipedian to sign it. Uh, now, no, no, here and after invented. Like in, in ten years on the quantum computer, I still cannot publish it. Um, I do, I do get some rights, uh, even though I wrote the article. Uh, I can include the contribution in a compilation of own works, however, on condition that this does not constitute a reproduction of the contribution. So can I include it or can I not include it? This is very confusing. I do not understand this. If there's any copyright lawyer here, please explain this to me after the talk. I still don't know, even though I signed the contract. Uh, I can quote the contribution, can, so can I quote it or can I not quote it? Like it's, it's self-contradicting in a lot of ways. Uh, I can reproduce the contribution in a limited number. What is a limited number? What if I, if I give you handouts uh, here for like what, 50 people? Is it limited or is it not limited? I don't know. Um, and uh, I have the right to include it uh, as support to lecture. So if I'm lecturing, I can give it as a handout to my students, even though I wrote it. I, I have the permission. To do it, even though, uh, do you do you know this album by Radio Hands? They have this uh, snarky comment in the credits: "Lyrics used by kind permission, even though we wrote them." <laughs> um, that's so Radio Hands did it, and th that's exactly how I felt when I had to write, uh, when I had to sign that copyright contract. It's, it's really, uh, I have I have the right to make announcements in relevant circles, such as Twitter. Um, and I was uh, when I when it was finally published, I was very happy to tweet about it. And I thought, is it is it a relevant circle? Like honestly. I don't know. They didn't tell me what's a relevant circle. Uh, um, anyway, uh, very, very, I don't know. But then it made me quite unhappy. I signed it. I signed the contract for the for the reputation and for for the fun of writing for an encyclopedia and giving the stock eventually. But um, it's it's pretty depressing. It's a nice reminder why we are doing a free encyclopedia in Wikipedia. Uh, the, these copyright terms, if you read them, it's 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 really awful. Uh, language. I don't actually have to say much about language. It's, uh, that encyclopedia was only in English. When it was finally published, uh, professors of Hebrew that I know, they were very happy that uh, this encyclopedia was published uh, because it's about their field. They were very unhappy that it was published only in English and not in Hebrew. Um, that's just how it is. I, I, I don't know. I guess it's a matter of market. It's a matter of demand. Uh, it's kind of weird, but that's how it is. That I guess that there are more people interested in Hebrew that don't know Hebrew, which is kind of strange, but I guess. Uh, in Wikipedia, that's of course unheard of. Uh, I'm, um, it's probably, it probably won't be a surprise for you that uh, I'm, uh, I see stuff that I wrote in Wikipedia constantly translated to other languages. Um, it's just the usual thing. No, nobody even thinks about it. Community. Now, community is a word that we hear a lot when we speak about Wikipedia. Community, community, community. It's a, and we think that it's this... Um, um, we don't know what it is. Uh, we, we speak about it a lot, but what it really is. So let me tell you what it is not. In that encyclopedia, I could not talk to anybody. 
I didn't have anybody to talk to. I only had the, the editor-in-chief to talk to. If I had any questions, if I needed any help, I could only speak to the editor-in-chief. I could not speak to other editors. They could not help me in any way. Uh, I could not discuss scope. I could not ask for any technical support. I could not. They, they had a serious manual of style. Um, luckily, I was experienced with manuals of style from Wikipedia, so I didn't have any trouble with it. But I heard that other editors had trouble with it, and they didn't have they didn't have anybody to help them except the editor in chief. They could not help each other. We have each other to, to, to help each other in, in any way. Please um, uh, do appreciate this. We we are we are a community. Even if we uh, even if we don't feel it, when you lack this, it's it's really lacking. I'm, I I felt that I'm I'm, I'm very much alone. Uh, original research, this is the fun part. So in Wikipedia we have this policy of no original research, uh, pretty much in all languages. Um, can I do original research in this encyclopedia? Well, apparently, more or less, yes I can. Uh, because I write this article and it's reviewed by other people, and if it's reviewed by other people, it's not original research anymore. Uh, and if it's reviewed by other people, it's not original research anymore. Now I can, now I can cite this in Wikipedia. Um, I actually, I actually, I was really happy about this because uh, I, I, I made a little, tiny little discovery about Hebrew vowels. Uh, it was not published anywhere, um, and now it's published here. So just a little explanation. This is a restaurant in Jerusalem, and uh, you can see these little dots here under the T and uh, near the U in the end. So these are Hebrew vowels applied to uh, English text, to foreign text. So I found that it's, it's quite a phenomenon that happens quite a lot in Israel, uh, this mix-up of Hebrew vowels and English text. Uh, I described it in my article that I wrote. It was accepted, it was published, now I can cite it in Wikipedia. If, uh, if it wasn't published, I could not cite this in Wikipedia. Uh, they, they would probably delete this image because of copyright or whatever, or original research, or I don't know what. Now I can cite it. It's like a filter. Uh, very nice thing. Uh, which brings us to illustrations. Um, in Wikipedia, we love adding lots of illustrations. It's, it feels very natural to us. It, feel, it feels very simple to us. Almost all articles have some kind of an illustration. Adding in an illustration is fairly easy if you discount the, the, the unfortunate suboptimal Commons UI and all these templates and stuff. But, but we do love this, and uh, despite this, uh, this hard thing, we do have lots of illustrations. Apparently, in that encyclopedia, there are very few of them. Uh, I, I, I read the published encyclopedia. Um, there were lots of uh, illustrations in my article. They were very few in, in most other articles. There are like hundreds of pages without any illustrations. Um, in Wikipedia, I obviously place my illustrations wherever I want, and other editors may move them around and make them better. In this encyclopedia, uh, I had to submit it as a Microsoft Word file, and they, uh, and they asked not to add any images to it, and they said that all the illustrations would be added by the typesetters. What they didn't say is that they would be added incorrectly. The, the illustrations were added to the wrong parts of the article. I had to explain them how to move them around. Uh, now money. <laughs> money is a very important, very, very important thing. For writing the Wikipedia, we get a warm, fuzzy feeling. Uh, we don't get any money. We get the feeling that, yay, we share knowledge, and this is really great. Um, for writing this is an encyclopedia, what I got Yes, this is this is right from the contract. Uh, if I if I want to buy the print uh, edition, I get a 50% discount, uh, which is almost $200, which means that the three volumes of that encyclopedia cost more than $1,000. Three volumes. Yes, uh, that's pretty crazy. Um, just three volumes. Um, now, a few years ago, uh, I was in Kiev and I bought this lovely encyclopedia of Ukrainian language, which is uh, uh, very, similar in, very similar in scope, just shorter, just one volume. It costs 100 times less. I, like, it's like it's one volume instead of three and costs 100 times less. I don't know, it's crazy, I don't understand it. Where does that all money go? I, I, I honestly don't know. I don't work in the publishing industry, I just wrote this article. It obviously doesn't go to me. It obviously doesn't go to the reviewers. The reviewers did their work as more or less volunteers. Uh, it, I guess that the typesetters do get something. Um, it, well, it, it's good for my career, but 
still, where does the money go? And there's also this um, price discrimination thing that somebody this morning told me this, and, and I added this to the slide. Uh, so it's it's a it's a pricing policy. It's a, it's a marketing policy, and this basically means that um, almost nobody will buy this encyclopedia except libraries, which is a shame because the the information in encyclopedia is useful to at least to the general public of Hebrew speakers and. This price makes it completely inaccessible to them unless they bother to go to a large library and find it. Um, this is a problem. Uh, so this, this track is about, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this track is about uh, innovation in education and stuff like that. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think that this is one of the biggest problems. Uh, we're getting close to the end. Uh, copy editing and uh, kind of edit worrying. Uh, I was asked to write uh, up to 2,000 words, I wrote 3,000. They didn't cut anything, they just published it as, as I wrote it, which was very nice of them. Um, one uh, curious thing is uh, I wrote about this little thing. I mentioned uh, something called non parase. Does anybody, everybody knows what non parase is? Yes. It's, it's these colorful candy. They, they, so they, they, uh, they change it. Uh, I wrote non parase and they change it to candy. And um, uh, I asked them to change it back, and they changed it back. It was a kind of a little edit war. That was all. The, that was all. All I had. Um, and uh, well, we are getting close to the end. Um, I submitted it finally in November two thousand and ten. Uh, I submitted on time, on the deadline, uh, which is very, very, very rare thing for me. Apparently, a lot of other writers didn't. I also adhere to the manual of style. Apparently, a lot of other writers didn't. Uh, I, I, I managed to find some, and they all said that the manual style is very complicated, that they don't know how to use the right fonts, and they don't know how to use it. It was actually published only three years after that. Uh, it took them a very, very long time to, to typeset everything, uh, to edit everything, to compile it, to prepare it for printing. Um, a huge thing, I don't know. Um, updating the paper encyclopedia. No, no such thing. Um, I have like I have factual mistakes there, misspellings, outdated information, all perpetuated. What's even worse, this is the front page of the encyclopedia. This first name here, it's misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the name the name of Shmuel Bolotsky, it's not Bolotsky, it's Bolotsky. Uh, and it's perpetuated in libraries and Poor Shmuel Bolotsky, he's a very famous linguist of Hebrew language, that's, that's a shame. Uh, you know about Wikipedia. Uh, and that's really the last thing. Uh, who writes it? Uh, mostly PhDs, but also some MAs and BAs like me, um, which is an innovation. And it's an innovation that everybody was really happy about. Uh, other writers, uh, the editors, apparently students can write encyclopedia articles. Uh, isn't that a new thing for us? <laughs> so, uh, well, apparently this encyclopedia learned it. It, it worked out well. Um, and that's the end of my talk. Uh, this is my cat who has <laughs> nothing to do with uh, the talk. Um, any questions? We have a couple of minutes for questions. Oh, I have a comment. Yeah. Uh, I'm not like to thank you for the very colorful comparison of apples and pears. <laughs> I started in MA. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't have a master's yet. Uh, I, I wrote it as a BA. What's the BA? 
uh, Hebrew, uh, Hebrew language and linguistics, precisely the, the title of this encyclopedia. Uh, Rom Romance studies. Anything else? Uh, one last? Uh, some of them are, uh, some of them about other things, some of them about other languages, some of them about Russia, some of them about Poland, some of them about Israel, about India, about lots of things. But yeah, quite a lot of them are about Hebrew. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much. seconds to um, sort out the computer again. We'll be with you in a couple of minutes. Um, uh, I want to talk about trust, distrust, loyalty, and whatnot. Uh, I'm a professor of management, just got full professorship last month. Uh, uh, I'm also the founder of the New Research on Digital Societies group, in short, NERDS, uh, where we study digital societies. And I'm also a Wikimedia, uh, steward, accuser, bureaucrat, admin in Polish Wikimedia, and also the Funds Dissemination Committee member. I totally encourage you to come and uh, talk to me about funds. And for the presentation today, I want to talk to you a little bit about my research. It's been an ongoing project for the last couple of years. And what I really find fascinating about Wikipedia is that it's a website. Let's take the English Wikipedia only. Four million articles. 
but more than 22, actually about 25 now, pages in total. Of course, there's categories, there's top pages, but a whole body of our text is community life. These are discussions, these are, uh, well, decisions in the community that we're making, these are essays on how we should do things, but apparently, we are the largest encyclopedia in humankind, and yet, the amount of our community life is three, four times larger. This is amazing, and this is what I, what I study. Uh, and obviously, in a study like this, it's very difficult to, to do anything if you're not an insider. So I decided to go ethnographic. My field is anthropology of organization, so I decided to go native. I became a Wikipedian. And since 2006, I've been editing and also doing field work. The results are out just last May. Common knowledge, Stanford University Press. The, thank you. The publisher has asked me to tell you that today and today only there's a special discount for you <laughs> in front of this particular auditorium. Uh, do not get too excited. I will not see much from this particular publication. The previous presenter uh, described how the publishing business works pretty accurately. Uh, but I definitely encourage you to have a look uh, if you're interested. And the whole project, as I told you, was ethnographic, which means that I was observing you. Yeah, you were the subjects. And I was writing of uh, what I saw. And today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a very famous incident from Wikipedia history. I'm pretty sure most of you heard about it. Uh, the so-called SG controversy. Is there anyone in this room who took part in the SG discussions? No? Oh yeah, yeah. see a couple of people. So this was a very interesting case. I think, even though it was in 2007, I think it really well shows us how trust, distrust, loyalty, credentials are enacted on Wikipedia. For those of you who do not remember, just to refresh your memory, essentially it was a, an incident from 2007. <coughs> there was this guy uh, whose nickname was SG, and he said that he's a tenured professor of theology, if I remember correctly. He became an admin on English Wiki, 98 support, percent support, pretty, pretty high. He was a bureaucrat, a Czech user, he was a chair of the mediation committee, but pretty nice. Uh, and as it turned out, uh, Daniel Brandt tipped New York Times that uh, he's actually a 24-year-old former parallel clerk. No professor there. Uh, so a huge dispute started what, what's, if, it's, if it's right or it's wrong. It's, it's not clear, right? I mean, if you're a Wikipedian, why are you supposed to reveal your true identity? It's, it's not clear. I'm, 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 I myself, I do not really want to tell everybody uh, who I am uh, on my wiki page. Why, why would I? I shouldn't be obliged to do this. So there was a huge discussion. Uh, and SG was defending himself pretty smartly. And he said that he set up a false persona because of the uh, privacy reasons. Uh, he said that he received many death threats. Uh, well, so it was a little bit of a surprise for me. I, I'm, I'm an active Wikimedia. I have never, ever received a death threat. But to be quite honest, before uh, 2008, I was giving my full name on my wiki page. Unfortunately, a psychotic martial arts instructor was pretty angry uh, about what I wrote about him. Because I wrote that he, well, I had sources that he was uh, working for the communist regime. And well, I added this source to an article about him. And he was really, really threatening me. So I totally can sympathize with his situation. As he was saying, he was receiving death threats. Every, I'm pretty sure all of you can sort of relate to this. Maybe not death threats, but threats definitely. 24% of our editors feel harassed. One fourth of editors on Wikipedia feel harassed. So we all can relate to this particular feeling, and I definitely am certain that when SG said that what was happening to him, uh, oh, this is, yeah. <laughs> this is large. Uh, no, of course, I mean, it's my fault. Uh, it's, uh, it's an anonymous, but the best form itself. I can read it to you. He, so he wrote, I decided to be myself, to never hide my personality, to always be who I am, but to utilize this information with regard to what I consider important details. Uh, unimportant details, age, location, occupation. And it makes perfect sense. I mean, after all, he sort of created a persona so as to protect his uh, presence on Wikipedia. So people supported him, and I totally understand that. Uh, even really prominent people, bureaucrats, uh, 
WJB scribe. Are you in the room? No, he's not. Uh, but he, he expressed his support, and I, I could write these words myself. Just want to express my 100% support for everything you do around here. I think you are totally entitled to protect your identity. Of course, he was entitled to protect it. Don't let all this fuss get you down. Jimbo, in the form of support, nominated him to ARPCOM. Uh, the New York Times quoted uh, Jimbo Wales as dismissing the issue. So it seemed as if it was a whole fuss, like sort of maybe created by Wikipedia for C people. You know, Daniel Grant was never very uh, favorable to us. So everyone perceived this as a sort of attack from the outside. But then again, it started a discussion, which is important even now. Are credential, credentials important? And people were saying, no, these are not important. Qualifications don't matter here. Who cares? Uh, we definitely require verifiability. We require reliable sources. It doesn't matter if you're a PhD student or if you're a junior high school kid. As long as you're following the verifiability and the sources, you're, you should be fine. However, later onwards, people started to dig. And it turned out that SJ was maybe not entirely doing it right. Because he, he of course, the fact that he claimed he's a tenured professor of theology, that, that's his thing. But he was trying to leverage this particular status to get more way into his argument. So for example, once he wrote, uh, Catholicism for dummies is a good source. And he said, this text is what I often require for my students, as I would hang my own PhD on this credibility. <laughs> okay, I, mean, that's a, I would have to say, I mean, this is a pretty strong claim, but if I heard this from a theology professor, oh, all right, maybe this is this series for dummies is not that bad at all. Uh, so this and other comments from, from him made it a little shady, right? I mean, we all understand that sometimes we need to hide our identity, but uh, you leveraging your fake identity to gain something is a sort of a different story. So the time changed, and the people started asking him to step down, including the people from the board, Jimbo as well, because Jimbo, he was struggling, if I, if I recall correctly, he was struggling at the time. Once he learned how the situation is evolving, had a full information, he also explained that uh, this is not perhaps not entirely how it should go, so SG had to step down. Uh, but this incident, this is one, just one story which is uh, symptomatic of something bigger. What is really interesting is how we as a community reacted to this later. Because this is a very straightforward case. Somebody lied about being an expert. So maybe it would be reasonable for people who want to claim they're experts to allow them but to verify it, right? If I am a professor, I'm a professor, I put it on my page, voluntarily, let the community verify it. Maybe not through sending an ID, but through some other form of verification, I don't know, a university email, whatever. And this is pretty much what Jimbo proposed, and he uh, suggested there should be verification <laughs> credentials. He went as far as to tell to Associate Press that this is where, what, where we are going. So he, he was certain that the community is going to verify credentials. But, big surprise, uh, the community wildly protests, like, like wildly. I mean, this book is about 110,000 words in total. Uh, the discussion about the credentials verif verification was 130,000. So, a little longer than this book. Uh, immediately, people started discussing whether we should ignore all credentials. Uh, there was a proposal to ban credentials. So if anybody writes they're a professor, ban them. I know. <laughs> Great idea. Thumbs up. This is how we can attract more experts. Uh, all in all, I mean, as usual in our community, there was no stable outcome of this. I mean, there was a lot of fuss, uh, a lot of quarrels, a lot of discussions. No outcome at all, possibly. However, well, the, I'm exaggerating. There's one outcome. There's this honesty pledge, honesty essay. 14 people were for it, 13 were against it. So uh, not, a, not a big uh, thing. In general, this, this uh, honesty pledge now states that you should not create a false persona for, for leveraging it as, for your status. Uh, is the Wikipedia uh, advisory note. One of the official accepted norms on Wikipedia is honesty. According to this norm description, an honest Wikipedia does not intentionally misrepresent their identity or credentials. Pretty much straightforward, very low level, and again, just an advisory essay. So I started questioning myself, why is it so? 
everybody's complaining we do not have enough experts. Everybody's saying we should have more professors, more qualified people. So why is it so that we both want them and sort of do not even let them tell us that they have the authority? As of now, fake personalities, fake personas are allowed on many Wikipedias, many projects. That's totally fine to misrepresent who you are as long as you are not dishonest about it. Sock puppetry, again, it is strongly <laughs> forbidden on some projects, but on some it isn't. On Polish Wikipedia, it's totally fine to have sock puppets as long as you do not use it to, to create false representation of support and you do not sort of in interact between the puppets. So even that is allowed on some projects. And I think the reason for that is that the identities that we create on Wikipedia are meant for the community only. So we create our status within the community, just like in the world of Warcraft. When you go there, yeah, well, I'm sorry um, to break this to you, but this is a role-playing game that we are having. We are actually in the business of having a game. We are playing editors. We are playing encyclopedia writers. Uh, the previous presenter told us, yeah, how happy and excited he was that he is writing a real encyclopedia. Uh, well, no surprise here, people are really happy to do stuff that adults do. And we want to play adults, we want to play professors, we want to play experts. If we allow real experts to bring their authority to, to the community, they will have a better status. And this will sort of distort the big image. I think we cannot possibly allow to create layers of hierarchy, layers of expertise, just because we want this to be egalitarian. So there's one reason. Another, I believe that on Wikipedia, trust into people is very low level. I do not trust anyone. Anyone? Well, uh, I have good reasons for this. Is, this is what you're supposed to do. Do not trust anyone. If whatever they say, backtrack the history of their edits, Whatever, if, if somebody comes up for adminship, look through their edits again, uh, try to seek for stuff they, they, they dig, they dug in the past. One second mistake, uh, even if it's retracted, it's retracted, it stays with you forever. It's about total control. Foucaultian panopticon, everybody observes everybody. We're in, we're in a big prison. Uh, so we cannot trust anyone. We, we do not even trust people we know. Whatever we do, communication, off wiki is strongly discouraged. Why? Because everything should stay on the record. Everything you say can and will be used against you. So where should trust go? My view is that trust is transferred to procedures. We trust, we can't trust people because, you know, and nobody knows you're a dog on the internet, right? So we have to trust procedure, we have to trust that whatever we create as a structure and as a, a proper way to go, is uh, stable. And in a situation like this, when we trust procedures rather than people, it's only natural that you cannot really add value to someone's credentials. If someone said they are a tenured professor, this would sort of create a trust in this person. And we don't want that. Actually, it should be discouraged. We should avoid people who are bringing inequality to, to the picture. So, instead of this reciprocal trust, which is typical for organizations, we create trust in structures. We, of course, can build our status in the community this way much more easily. Uh, and we can, like in the world of Warcraft, we can you know, become demigods of whatever game we play. And at the same time, of course, it delegitimizes experts. Professors do not like us at all. Just because we do what they do for money, we do for free. So, this adds to the, to the, this is another slap adding, added to the insult. We don't even allow them to be recognized as professors they are. And this is a side effect, that the expertise brought to Wikipedia is just much more difficult. It's very difficult to, to play along if you're an expert. One thing that I could imagine, if I had a big vision, I would like to be able to see a button on Wikipedia articles which would say, expert comments and there would be three world experts commenting on the article. And each of these comments would be different. They would quarrel between each other. They would not agree with the article or agree with the article or present a certain angle, but this would be a, a different thing, like a commentary, separate from the article itself. 
Of course, this is the way we could go. I'm not sure if we're going to go there. So far, experts do not really have a place to to go with their expertise on, on, on Wikipedia. So the point, yeah. Yeah, right, about that. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you ever used a discussion page for this purpose? Uh, of course, experts can go there, but a discussion page comes and goes. It gets deleted. Nobody reads it anyway. Uh, what I envision is a place where you would actually know who the professor is. You would know this is the world expert in the topic, and they would write whatever they want. Nobody would delete it because it would be their space. On a discussion page, it's mainly for trolls. <laughs> and Well, maybe not mainly, but it, this is for trolls and for us. It's not for experts. I honestly do not believe an expert could win a debate on a talk page on Wikipedia. So finally, just to conclude, uh, bureaucracy takes over and we have to fight it. I think we have too much bureaucracy on Wikipedia. This is one of the side effects to it. We only have five minutes, so I would like to conclude with uh, opening the floor for questions. I totally share this view for regular Wikipedians. We should stay with the rules we have, verifiability, reliable sources. However, their Wikipedia articles are usually bland. It's like, it is, you can fill your stomach with it, but it's not, it doesn't have that much taste. It doesn't have a flavor. It's not subjective. And it shouldn't be. Encyclopedia should be an objective, but we should think global. We should have a vision. And the vision could be, let's allow people to have subjective comments. Why not? And if we start with subjective comments, the only reasonable way to go about it, I would think, <coughs> would to first go with experts. We have an article about global warming. I would like to see one paragraph from a person from the academic community strongly supporting that it's happening and another from strongly supporting that it's not. Let them fight each other. Yeah, that much. <laughs> I mean, many people would like to see their name a little more recognized if they really created the whole 90% of the article. I totally agree. More about this trust, distrust uh, is in the book. I couldn't possibly go into details now, but uh, I believe there is something about personal distrust on Wikipedia. Yeah. Who should name or nominate the experts? This is a very good question. This is probably one of the problems why we, why we don't have this. We would, I think we as the community would have to find a way. Maybe, you know, Maybe we do have experts within the community who are well-established professors, experts, editors, and are well in the community, and maybe there could be a body who would do this. But I see this as a very difficult problem when I, you know, I'm throwing idealistic ideas. I'm not saying this is going to, be, to happen. In this business of trusting procedures over people, do you think this is an instance uh, here where you have a greater uh, phenomenon across open source projects, open culture projects, because I, I don't think that this is unique to Wikipedia. 
Oh, I think it's sort of unique because Wikipedia is different from other open source projects in a sense that on Wikipedia we have non-experts almost only. Nobody's an expert in writing a, an encyclopedia. While in floss projects, like, like when, when people are software engineers, this is what they professionally do, but they also do open uh, collaboration. So for non-expert communities, it is typical. I'm not entirely sure if this distrust in people is as widespread in, in software development, just because in software, you bring your credentials with you. You're an expert software engineer who did this and that and that, and everybody gives you credibility for what you did. While I, I personally, I, it would be very difficult for me to name fellow Wikipedians and tell, yeah, they are experts in this particular article. Mm -hmm. because, uh, this is a, yeah, absolutely. This is why I don't want this in an article. I think it would be crazy to allow authors to claim their expertise and credentials and put this into article. This is what we see all the time, and we have to remove it, right? Because this is POV. Uh, but if there was a separate section which would say, as long as we recognize you as the top five experts in the field, you can make your sh very short point here. This would be interesting because for me. Reading an article on Wikipedia is quite often reading about the content, going through the sources, but what I lack is the very subjective angle from somebody who is an expert. And this is what we do not offer as, as, as of now. These do not even have to be experts. I could imagine that some editors could make very high quality comments that we as a community would recognize as relevant. So like a subjective angle to the objective message that Wikipedia already is, and we are already the best encyclopedia humankind ever had. Um, you made quite a few um, conclusions based on the essay of the mm -hmm. um, and everything that follows from that. Um, to what extent are your conclusions about Wikipedia, <laughs> and to what extent are they about the English? Well, I am active mainly on Polish and English Wikipedia, a little bit of common on meta. But obviously, uh, my insight into other languages is limited because you know, do not speak any other languages fluently enough. I only read about this and I speak to people who are active members of these communities. So obviously, the differences are important. The differences between Polish and English Wikipedia are also uh, significant. Much tighter control on English Wikipedia. Uh, again, I don't want to go into too many details, but obviously you're right. Ideally, we should study, I don't know, top 20 Wikipedias and go native, but it's just very difficult. Any final comments or questions? No. So, two, two final ones. Yeah, there, there is an ebook. Unfortunately, as typically for academic publishing, Stanford University Press is absolute. It's very expensive. It's very, ex it's very well. It, there is an ebook, but it, I don't think it's much cheaper. Uh, I'm not getting any money from this uh, as, as long as they do not sell, I don't know, 500 or 1,000 copies. I don't, well, I do not do this for the money, of course. But they're extremely expensive and very uh, non-negotiable. I cannot make it open, I cannot have, make it open access. I had to make a choice, either go with the academic press or go with some, with, with where my, uh, my heart is. But this was unfortunately important for my, for my promotion. So I get to go with academic press. I, I regret it, but there's nothing I can do about it. And the final question? Uh, but the, 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 your idea about like, top experts on these fields, I find this interesting because many articles, including global warming, are interdisciplinary topics. So the most interesting thing would be to have a comment of a physician, a physicist, <laughs> this is a very good point too because you know when we write an article we usually we try to blend all together but to have even a lawyer right lawyers view on global warming and then we have anthropologists view on global warming this is this is cool yeah. and there could be separate sources and if somebody writes an article for anthropology specifically they will go for this section uh, yeah very good idea okay uh, okay, just final one. One with one minute. Sorry, last one. Um, given what you were saying about trust in systems and <coughs> more than people, 
Can I ask you to state what your opinion is on the state of something like, you know, the idea of assuming good faith in other mm -hmm. editors? Is that still a important like principle to you? Absolutely. I mean, without assuming good faith, we'd kill each other. <laughs> we all really try. So, I think assuming good faith is a safety valve. I mean, we already bite newcomers. Most new editors experience hostility from experienced editors. So, obviously, we need to remind each other all the time we should assume good faith. These people are not really trying to do any harm. And nevertheless, we, we, we diss them. So, I, I, I totally want this. Uh, to stay. Okay, thank you very much. If you have any other questions, I'm available in the Thank you, Darius. Thank you, Amir. Uh, we now break for half an hour, so please feel free to go out and get yourself some refreshments, and we'll be starting again in here in about half eleven, where the lovely Stuart will be looking after you. Thank you all.
squares of two. <laughs> Yeah. 